Welcome to the masterclass portion of this video. Today we'll be doing a masterclass about three woes. We're going to talk about some of the different scenarios you can run in with three woes and how unique and powerful and interesting this card is, especially with all the different types of interactions here. So let's start with some of the more basic applications of three woes. The opponent has a evil fortress you want to target. You can go ahead and play this down as a good dominant. A good dominant would negate their evil fortress. And so this effect would stop happening. And then this would just be sitting in play. And vice versa, you can play this as an evil dominant to negate their good fortress. Interesting thing about this says, it says negate a card of different alignment. So if you played this as good or evil, neutral cards have a different alignment than good or evil. So if you played a three woes, you could also target neutral artifacts. So if you wanted to, you could play your three woes and negate an artifact. Three woes can even target things in set aside area like shield. Shield plays to set aside area. The way that default targeting rules happen in redemption, three woes can target anything in play or set aside area. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so this part might be a little bit confusing, but when curses and covenants are activated as artifacts, their alignment isn't good or evil, it's neutral. So if opponent has an active artifact, you can use your three woes to negate it, even if it's a curse. And like, let's say you played this as an evil dominant and they activated the curse, you might think in your mind, I can't use this three woes to negate this curse. But since once you activate this artifact, it's neutral, no matter what you have your three woes on, you can negate their curse or covenant. Three woes can also be used to negate annoying cards in their territories, like territory class characters. So for example, Resurrection Revealer has a really strong ability that negates your neutral cards. So you can play your three woes as evil, Go ahead and target the Resurrection Revealer and their Territory class ability will stop working. Let's start thinking about some scenarios where Three Woes can't actually negate something. The scenario that I'm first going to talk about is Priest of Zeus. So it's his Territory class character that says cannot be interrupted on it. That means once he activates, his ability can't be stopped. And so the Territory class characters, they activate as soon as you play them down. Opponent has a Priest of Zeus out, you want to try and negate it. You cannot use your Three Woes to interrupt and prevent his ability from happening. So this would be an example where you can't use three woes to negate something in their territory. Something says cannot be interrupted on it. The same can be said about cards that say cannot be negated. You cannot use a three woes card to negate a card that says cannot be negated. You also can't use three woes to try and negate characters from activating their ability in battle if they say cannot be prevented on it. So let's say you played this card down and targeted their Simeon the Devout because you really didn't want him to trigger when he entered battle. When he enters battle, he activates and Three Woes is trying to prevent it, but he has the cannot be prevented modifier. Simeon would work. You cannot use the Three Woes to prevent characters from activating in battle. So for example, let's say opponent has a hair to grip it out. He says cannot be prevented. You can't use your Three Woes to try and negate his ability from happening before, before he enters battle. So let's just say you have this out in your territory and you choose to move the negation counter to Herod. Herod can still enter battle and his ability will happen because he has a cannot be prevented modifier. However, in battle, things become a little bit different. Let's say you're attacking with a hero and they're blocking with their Herod. After they block, that's when you can use your three woes to negate their ability. So even though this cannot be prevented, it can be interrupted. And three woes would be interrupting it when you play it in battle. Let's talk about some more limitations of when you can play three woes. Three woes, you can't play it if there's no target for it. So here's what I mean. Let's say opponent is attacking you with the Angel of the Winds, and they're going to try to exchange this hero with a hero on their deck. So let's say they go and swap this hero out for maybe like a guy like Simon, and this guy goes back to their deck. You can't use three woes to try and target their angel that's not there anymore. That effect has to happen. The angel has to go back to the deck. In order for you to play three woes to try and negate it, that target, the target of three woes has to be in play. Alternatively, opponent is using a character like Simon who can convert himself to Meek, you can't target his ability to, to negate it if he's a different type of character. So let's say they attack, they do their ability, and then they flip to the Meek side. The Meek side doesn't have a special ability. And you can't use three woes to target, try and negate his uh, converting to Meek and choosing the blocker. So that's another scenario where that target really doesn't exist anymore. Another sneaky play you can do as far as trying to play around this targeting rule, the opponent knows you have a three woes in hand and they have an outsiders and a Herod's Temple out. They can activate the Herod's Temple and start tossing enhancements. When you attack and they block with outsiders, assuming you have the board advantage, they can underdeck, you know, a bunch of things. So let's say I had like a couple different colors out. And normally, normally the underdeck would happen. I would go on the bottom of my deck. And then after, after that happens, there's a chance for me to play a dominant before the battle is ended, there's a chance for me to play a dominant. So I could play three woes is good, go ahead and negate that card, and my guy would go come back and the battle would be back on. However, really smart 
opponents with outsiders can actually target outsiders with one of the underdecks. So let's say X was three. They're like, okay, I'm gonna underdeck my outsiders and then underdeck your Shamgar. And so the, the battle's over, I have a chance to play a dominant, but now I can't play my three was to target the outsiders because he doesn't exist anymore. The same concept happens with cards like Contagious Fear that actually remove the evil characters from battle. Let's consider the difference between a card like Worshipping Demons or Contagious Fear. Contagious Fear, when you play it, you have to reserve a New Testament human in battle to protect lost souls from rescue. So if you only have one evil character in battle and you play this card, you can reserve this character. And now the battle's like effectively over because there's no more evil characters. And there's no opportunity for the opponent to play a dominant to try and negate this card. Once no evil characters are in battle, all evil enhancements go to the discard pile. On the other hand, if you, if an opponent is blocking and plays a card like Worshipping Demons, the battle is still happening. So even though they're protecting lost souls from rescue, you have an opportunity before the battle's over to actually play your three woes and negate this card. Let's talk about another scenario. Let's say opponent has an artifact they activate. Boom. Goliath's Curse. They're going to underdeck this card to underdeck a good card in territory. So let's say they're trying to underdeck that to underdeck your Shamgar. You can't play your three woes to negate the artifact because there's no artifact in play. I hope you're understanding this concept by now. Okay, let's talk about another scenario called Special Initiative. Special Initiative happens when your last hero is getting removed from battle. You may think you could play Dominance during that time, but that's actually not the case. You cannot play Dominance during Special Initiative. So let's consider a scenario. Let's say I'm attacking with Shamgar, they block with Priest of Zeus, and then they play the Enhancement side of Glass Curse to negate and discard Shamgar. Shamgar is being put in Special Initiative, I have opportunities to play good enhancements that can interrupt the battle and stop this, but I cannot play my three wells as good to negate this Glyph's Curse because I can't play Dominance during Special Initiative. Let's talk about a scenario where you can play Dominant that could help you win the battle. So I'm attacking with Shamgar, he's going to block with his Sol Tarsus. Sol Tarsus, he's going to go grab an unsuccessful from his reserve. And then before he has the opportunity to play enhancements, there's a place he can resolve Dominant Initiative. You can play dominance while nothing else is happening. So these characters are just start looking at each other and as the active player, you can play a dominant. So before he has the opportunity to block, you can play a three woes as good and then negate Saul's special ability and the opponent would have to put unsuccessful back to his reserve. But if you pass during that, that moment and didn't play it, Saul of Tarsus, he has initiative. He's a 4-2 versus a 6-6. He could play unsuccessful. The battle ends as a stalemate and you'd lose your opportunity to play three woes to try and negate anything. The battle's over, this card would go to his territory, this card would go to the discard pile, and there's nothing to try and negate with three woes, it's too late. Alright, the last scenario I want to talk about is the interaction with three woes and the Humble Lost Soul. Humble Lost Soul says during battle, while your opponent has more cards in hand than you, your cards cannot be prevented by your opponent's cards. So let's say you have a three woes down, and it's negating their Herod's Temple. If you start a battle, and they start blocking, what's going to happen to Herod's Temple? Is that card going to turn on again? So let's say opponent does have cards in hands than you so this would be active the thing about humble this only applies to cards that are activated in battle and fortresses are only activated when you play them so even though your opponent has a humble out and you're currently preventing their Herod's temple this card isn't being activated and thus would still be getting negated by three woes the same would apply if, if i was negating the resurrection revealer they're blocking they're triggering a battle and then they're happy having humble active because i didn't play this character or block with this character this character is not active, and thus he does not gain any humble modifiers. So just a clarifying point about humble and how it works with three woes and some territory class stuff. On the other hand, let's say you were defending, and you had your three woes on their resurrection revealer, and you wanted to try and negate this guy. Let's say they attack, now he's in battle, he's be activated, and then the th he would have the cannot be prevented modifier. So his ability would start to work again, but I just for battle. So if they have a card, or if you have a card trying to negate something, and if they block with that card, that's generally the, the scenario that that card would start to work again and three woes would stop working again. All right, let's talk about an advanced play you can do with three woes. Let's say it's the upkeep phase of your turn and you maybe just drew this card or you've had this card in your hand. You can play this card during your upkeep phase and actually try to negate two things at the same time. So let's say they have two cards you really want to negate. You can play this out during part of your upkeep phase have it target one thing and then this trigger will happen each upkeep you may negate a card of a different alignment so then you can use that trigger to negate a different card boom and so both of these cards will be negated for one round if you play this card on your upkeep so that's a really important trick to know with this card and it's not one that's super obvious either 
Lastly, I'd like to talk about what happens if opponent removes this card from play. Let's say they somehow play a card that gets rid of this card. Once this card goes away, the negate effects will stop happening immediately. Any cards that were being negated or prevented by three woes will start happening again. Three woes, once that card is removed from play, it stops having an effect on the game. All right, let me clarify one more scenario I did think of in this last second here. The question is, can I use my three woes to negate Humble, Lost Soul? Can I use my three woes to negate Overtaken as an artifact? And while it is true that these cards are neutral cards, and in general you can negate neutral cards with your three woes, the fact is that Humbles and Overtaken are both applying modifiers to cards. And modifiers are inherently cannot be negated. So modifiers are anything that says like cannot be prevented, cannot be interrupted, cannot be negated on it. If there's cards that are applying those modifiers, those abilities in and of themselves also cannot be negated. So same with Overtaken, it's applying modifiers to evil humans when certain conditions happen and that cannot be negated apparently. I've checked on Discord and that seems to be the consensus. So just keep this in mind if you have a three woes in hand or if your opponent is trying to negate your cards that have are playing modifiers to stuff. In the last part of this video, I want to announce a three woes giveaway. That's right, I'm giving away three woes. Let me tell you more. So here's how you enter. There's gonna be a link in the description. Go to that link and then there's gonna be a button right here where you can enter the giveaway using your YouTube account. This giveaway is gonna last for about a week. And next Friday, I'm gonna choose the winner. And I'll announce it here on the channel. So if you're interested in winning a free three woes, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. You don't need to do that to enter the giveaway. You just need to click the giveaway link. But yeah, I'm excited. You should be excited. This is the first giveaway ever. Let's do this. Dun, 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 dun.